Hello, church. My name is Pastor Marianne Sifke, and I am here at St. Luke Lutheran Church in Gilbertsville. And hey, friends, I'm Pastor Scott Staub, and I'm here at New Hanover Lutheran Church in Gilbertsville. <laughs> Imagine and, that. and today we have two readings, one Old Testament, one New Testament gospel. Uh, so we have Jonah, and I'm going to add some verses. So the lectionary says Jonah 3, 1 through 5. But I'm going to add the first chapter, 1 through 3, and then I'm adding the 10th verse of chapter 3. Hmm. And then, Scott, we're looking at Mark what? 1, uh, chapters 14 to 20. I'm not adding anything else. Okay. But, uh, I will <laughs> add a remark, though. <laughs> okay. All right. So let us begin with Jonah, hmm. chapter 1. Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah, son of Amittai, saying, Go at once to Nineveh, that great city, and cry out against it, for their wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah set out to flee to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. He sent down, he went down to Joppa and found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid his fare and went on board to go with them to Tarshish, away from the presence of the Lord. Hmm. And chapter three, the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time saying, get up, go to Nineveh, that great city, and proclaim to it the message that I tell you. So Jonah set out and went to Nineveh, according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly large city, a three days walk across. Jonah began to go to the city going a day's walk, and he cried out, Forty days more, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh believed God. They proclaimed a fast, and everyone, great and small, put on sackcloth. When God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil ways, God changed his mind about the calamity that he had said he would bring upon them. And God did not do it. Here ends the reading. Fantastic. Thank you for adding those verses. Shirley gave a great context. Our gospel reading today is Mark chapter 1, uh, verses 14 to 20. If you have your Bibles open, uh, please turn them over to Mark. And after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, follow me and I will make you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. And he went a little further, and he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in their boat, mending their nets. Immediately he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. Here ends the reading. So I know this will make you especially happy, Pastor Marianne, is that... Uh, once again, in our lectionary, uh, we have repeating of stories week after week. And uh, just like there was a man who went on a journey <laughs> and how we had the seemingly six weeks of that. Right, right. <laughs> now we start off this year in the epiphany with Jesus was <laughs> gathering his disciples. And uh, it's just like, but there are two different gospel versions and I don't know why. Uh, you know, basically we have two different stories. It, it could be, you know, it's true. Like what they say, you know, like maybe if you're a witness to a crime, um, when, the, when the law enforcement comes, they ask the people uh, what they saw and people saw different things. And okay. so maybe this is a way of the tradition and the story that was handed down until the gospel writers wrote it, that the difference between Mark and John were, you know, these different accounts of 
how Jesus chose the disciples. So, but I found it interesting. I had to chuckle to myself when I read it. <laughs> I didn't look ahead to next weekend. I, I must admit, I didn't look ahead with everything going on in the world today. I didn't look ahead. So if it is, Jesus is on the shore. <laughs> oh my gosh. This is the instant replay of gospel reading. Yeah, right? exactly. Yeah. Oh, there's a lot of similarities here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh -huh. uh, see, how so? So what we didn't hear in the Jonah reading today is probably the part that people know. Jonah getting swallowed by the whale, um, God causing the whale to vomit Jonah on the seashore. <laughs> you know, yep. so we're, we're by the sea, um, nets and fish and God calling. Um, yeah, and God calling the disciple or the person to do something difficult, to proclaim yeah. repentance. Yeah. And that's I, not something we like to hear. No. I, I, um, uh, you know, last week when we talked about, um, Nathaniel claiming that, uh, how could anything good come out of Nazareth? You know, um, you know, you, you have these stigmas and these reputations. And when these stories are told, just like in Jonah, there you look into them, and um, you know people uh, had these stigmas about the other area. Maybe they had traditions, or maybe you know they were conquered by these people at one time, or maybe these people were just plain irritants. And and uh, and yet God is calling them and us to uh, follow and to go and do God's work in those areas. <laughs> total inclusiveness even of the of the crabby people and the nasty people <laughs> right right yeah you're right you hit the nail on the head you know it's just like woof. well i think it's interesting the the prophetic call to be a disciple mm -hmm. um that's not something that's easy to do but i think it's it's interesting to me that god was ready to obliterate Nineveh like all of it and the parts that we don't hear is even the funny parts that yeah. even the animals put on sackcloth and ashes and God was even ready to kill the animals of Nineveh so that's what a bad place it was but the actions of one called person changed yeah changed the trajectory of an entire city. And and we get that uh, same story in Moses, you know, it, it's uh, uh, yeah. another uh, person who was called by God. And then uh, you brought up yesterday while we were studying about the, I thought it was interesting, uh, you brought up about the tantrum, you used the word tantrum. And, you know, like when we talk theologically, we, we don't usually say our great prophets in the Bible through a tantrum. Yeah. But, it's a continuing story, you know, they are called, they are presented with a challenge and they're like, I can't speak well, um, you know. <laughs> I don't want to go there, God. No, right. I don't want to go there. I'm going to run away. <laughs> then they relent. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, and, and it was funny because, uh, you know, too, is it, like, um, you know, when I visited Egypt and that area where Moses was, uh, you know, historically tending to sheep of the family in that area, you know, it's like run away, where? <laughs> where are you going to hide? Right. <laughs> it's nothing but rocks and dust. <laughs> there's not even like shelters, you know, there's a few caves, but right. you get to like look miles and miles around and you get these sheep walking along with their little herder on the, on the, on the hillside because there's nothing else. There's nothing to protect anything. <laughs> and here you have, uh, you know, you have Jonah the same way, trying to find shade. And it's, a, it's a great stories. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 uh, I also then, uh, since yesterday, I talked about uh, or studied or read about uh, something that struck me uh, pretty 
strongly about exactly what you're talking about. Um, and it's kind of a more of a conclusive uh, statement, but it, it's a, uh, I think it's powerful if we start out, when we think about being called by God and I've been preaching about this the last three weeks about being called and, and, uh, and uh, significance of it. And, and also, you know, we studied yesterday about the, you know, it, people, because they're called, don't always just jump up and do it, you know. <laughs> right. <laughs> we have those that are and those that aren't, you know, and, uh, you know, I just, uh, I, but this one reading I had, I, I just wanted to share it. It's a, um, it was a, from the Archbishop of Olinda and uh receive and um and it's about his uh statement when he was ordained um as a bishop and he he says about um uh, it's an archbishop i'm sorry but uh, 1964 it says we all believe that all human beings are children of the same heavenly father those who have the same father are brothers and sisters and, and that just that that just knocked me to my core, you know, and starting at the very beginning and let us really treat each other as brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. So I, I just, uh, and in studying what we're studying, you know, and we are called and, and uh, I think with that mindset, sometimes it just helps us to go forward with God's calling. If we um, imagine the people that we're called to serve as our brothers and sisters rather than others. Yes. Mm. Yes. Amen. Yeah. But I also I also laugh and and I know you you stumped me yesterday. And part of the storytelling and the story of Jonah is is that sometimes when people look at a context and and everything and um, I will share, but it's not it's not written in the Bible. But you know, like sometimes theologians and people do commentary really dive deep into the story without parts and they they try to read in between the lines and i brought up the part of of uh, jonah being um his hair and his pigment of his body being totally absorbed by the the stomach acid of the whale <laughs> and people try to prove you know we have people that need proof in the Bible to believe in these stories. So they'll go to great lengths scientifically to prove these stories. But what always like stuck with me, even though it wasn't in there, but with the assumption and or the possibility that if you were in the belly of a great fish and you were, um, and you were in there, the stomach acid would turn your pigments, no matter what your skin tone was, to white from the bleaching and you would have no hair. And if you landed on shore and went to talk to somebody, <laughs> <laughs> they may be a little bit like, whoo, we believe you. <laughs> right. Yeah. And so people went to great lengths to dig up history of, of whales in the mid 18th century that oh spit out dogs and other whalers and how they looked. And they tried to prove the story that made it that Jonah looked like a ghost when he went to talk to the I mean, I just find it amusing, but I, you can just, these stories are just great stories. <laughs> well, you know, that that's interesting because we talk about the shining face of Moses. Mm. We talk about people, um, people who have seen God in the Old Testament and Jesus in the transfiguration, which is coming up right. and how being in the presence of God not only changes your heart and your soul, it changes your physical being. Mm -hmm. So, hmm. I had someone tell me once um, that they knew something was different about me um, and they meant different than other people. And I just kind of looked at them funny and they said, because you have the light of Jesus in your eyes. And I was completely taken aback by that. I was very surprised to hear that. But it makes me wonder, what do other people see? You know, I mean, what did the people of Nineveh see in Jonah? Um, what did the people see in the disciples? Yeah. Was there something about their presence that was different? Right. And maybe not something you could pinpoint 
Hmm. Or even in uh, in the eyes of Jesus that they immediately dropped their net, right? And immediately they left their nets yeah. and followed him. Immediately. I know, Mark, we talk about the superhuman because it's filled with explorative and, you know, and just, you know, everything's a exclamation mark. Right, <laughs> right. In the book of Mark, but uh, everything hero. happens quickly. Yeah. 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 I, I want to point out this. My favorite part of this Jonah reading is verse 10, mm. um, which I think ties everything together. Um, and it says, when God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil ways, God changed his mind. And that blew my mind <laughs> the first right. time I really understood that or really pondered that was God changing God's mind. And that our prayer and our actions and our discipleship and our prophetic words from God make a difference not only to humanity but to God right and that's huge yeah uh, I mean the Bible's filled with those stories for in the beginning and I forget which chapter and I guess I could look it up quick but uh, um, when uh, Jesus uh, I mean when Moses talked to God it said God talked to Moses face to face mm -hmm. and uh, God wants this relationship with each and every one of us where God can speak to us face to face in our prayers and and um and it is the pleading you take the story of Moses and you know um you take the stories of Abraham and you, you, you take the story of Jonah and about how um people and that have spoken to God face to face have pleaded with God and negotiating with God right <laughs> and uh and God you know, negotiates, you know, and, yeah. and uh, shows mercy at times when, when God initially planned to smote the people. <laughs> yep. Smote. Okay. Smote. <laughs> but it, it shows that, you know, God wants this relationship where it's just not one way. We're not puppets. We're not just merely created, you know, just to be little robots that go around and doing God's will. You know, it's just that we have freedom of choice, but also we have that freedom to uh, speak with God face to face and God listen. So. Amen. Not that all our prayers are going to be answered. I'm not saying that. I'm not, right. Right. <laughs> if you pray hard enough and send us money, we will. <laughs> it does I'm not work there. that way. <laughs> When I was in India, we visited a prayer ministry and, and we're walking through it. So we have this big thing and everybody rolls in from the family that was running this prayer tower, tower of prayer. And they, and they said, uh, and then all silk suits and everything. And God bless them. Man. But I mean, I asked them, I said, so where, where's the money? Are, are you, because all the, you know, thinking they were all mother Teresa's, but they're not really, they go, no, we, we just take the money and people send us prayer requests and send us money and we pray for them. <laughs> we keep the money. And I'm like, oh, okay <laughs> we're out okay. in the parking lot there was you know all beamers mercedes and that. we're like oh okay <laughs> wow. um, but it was just you know but uh yeah but god does god does want to have a relationship with us and i think that's the great news and willing to negotiate with us and sending us into perilous things but um you know puts up with us too when we say no you know, we don't always have to just jump up like the disciples here would immediately lose their leave their nets. I mean, sometimes it's four or five times, right? <laughs> Moses <Yep. laughs> and Jonah, you know, it's multiple times. Yeah. So don't feel bad out there. Right. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, thank you, Pastor Scott. It's been another good week. Yeah, it has been. Um I enjoy each and every week being with yourself and, and with our friends out there and, and yes. uh, just be able to share the stories and share some thoughts. So out there, if you, you know, you're able to watch this, I know you are out there. I'm finding out I click on there and I watch it. So you can make comments and share things and uh, share them with your friends and, um, you know, challenge us a little bit. That would be fun too. Um, I may not, uh, just like Joan, I may not answer right away. <laughs> Go hide underneath a bush. <laughs> but 
Yeah. No, I'm not going to. There's no whale nearby, but. <laughs> no. 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 Well, peace, friends, until we meet again. Yeah, go get them. <laughs>